So we're going to go through some practice problems here, but to begin with, something that I was going to show you today, uh, and I actually uploaded a copy of uh, on Classroom, is called uh, what I like to call the mole map. Um, this is a great little organizational tool, especially for those of you that might still be trying to or struggling through um, like how to convert uh, or what direction should I use to convert, right? Um, so I'm going to use this thing as we go through a couple of these here today as well. So you can kind of get used to what uh, we're looking at. But but the general idea is um, putting your finger or such on the, uh, uh, the unit that you're starting in um, and then what unit you're trying to go to. And you can follow it like a map, and that's going to show you how many conversion steps uh, you, you need in here. Now, this is assuming that we're keeping with, uh, you know, normal units and, and such as well. But um, so, like I said, I'm going to use this uh, here throughout a couple of these to, to show you what we're looking at or to show you how to how to use this thing. Uh, so let's let's start off with this one. Um, this is number uh, number seven. Uh, on both of these. I actually found out that uh, uh, each class I kind of gave the wrong number to, but this is this is number seven, um, I think, on both of them here. All right, so um, a pure gold coin contains 0 0.01134 millimoles of gold. How many gold atoms does it contain? So remember that the first thing that I'm going to ask or that you should ask yourself is, What am I? What am I looking for? Right? And and when we ask this question, we're going to answer it in a particular way. Right? So you always want to answer it in that how many blank are in blank, right? That kind of format. So for us, right, we're looking for. How many gold atoms are in zero point zero one one three four millimoles of gold? All right, and remember when we ask it this way, um, you're always going to have a number and a unit. This is where we're going to start. And this is where we're going to end. All right. So let's do that. Let's start here. I'm going to start with 0 0.01134 millimoles of gold. Now, if we look at our molar map here, right, we are starting in, well, kind of in moles. Right, let me switch colors here. We're starting in moles and we want to go to particles, right? Representative particles here. Um, as we look at this, actually, let's go back to this here for just a second. Representative particles, right? Um, that could be atoms. That could be molecules. That could be formula units. Right, depending on whether we are looking at an element, a covalent compound, or an ionic compound. Okay, so um, we're going from moles to representative particles. So on this mole map, this shows us that we're going to go here. We're going to have one step, but the problem is we're not in moles right now. We are in millimoles, right? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert from moles to milli, or I'm sorry, from millimoles to moles. Well, 
metric prefix tells us that one mole equals 1,000 millimoles, right? So remember, this is an equivalency statement. So we can put one side of these on top for a conversion factor. We can put one side on the bottom of this. What we use is our previous, um, our previous uh, unit here. So for us, put this over one, we see that millimoles is on top here. So I'm going to take this bottom portion, or this portion over here, and I'm going to put that on the bottom. And I'm going to take the other side and put it on top. So because now, sorry, let me put the gold in here. Now these cancel out. So if we were to stop doing our math right now, uh, we would see how many moles we have, right? So now we can go over here to our mole map and we see that we are going to go from moles to representative particles, right? from moles to representative particles here, right? Or for us, that's going to be atoms. <clears throat> so if we look at this, uh, it says, um, if we are going in this direction, we're going to use this one. Now, sometimes I hate showing this mole map because people become really reliant upon it. I don't want you to forget that you have to follow your units, right? So we have moles of gold on top. So that means we're going to use this, which really and truly tells us one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, right? Well, mole of gold on top. So that means we're going to take this one and put it on the bottom. One mole on the bottom so that these will cancel out and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms of gold on top. Those cancel out. All right. Um, and if we look, our units are in atoms of gold. Now we can do our math. We don't want to do our math before this, right? Do not do the math before this. Waste of time. And actually you become less uh, accurate in your answer as well. We all know that sometimes our, what we, uh, what our calculator types and what we end up writing down are two different things, right? So if we end up cutting out some numbers off the end of a number that we would write down on our paper and then do math with it again, we're compounding our error, right? We're, we're just not as precise as we could be. So wait until the very end to do your, your math, right? And, and like I said, for your calculator, let's pick a different color. For your calculator, right, when we see a conversion factor, if it is on the top, we hit our multiplication sign. If it is a denominator, we hit a division sign. And if you remember, or if you do that every time, you, you it doesn't matter what order you put them in. We know that multiplication and division, it doesn't matter what order. So I'm gonna do, I am going to do uh, 0 0.01134. This is on top, so I'm going to hit times before I, sick enter 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then, so I'm, I, for me, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. I always do the multiplication all the way across the top and then a division sign before everything across the bottom. So on this one, I would hit 
that sign, right? So 0 0.01134 times 0 0.602 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 1,000. And that gives us an answer of 6.827 times 10. Oh, sorry. 10 to the 18th atoms of gold, right? <clears throat> okay, let's do a couple more. I won't go quite as in, in as much detail uh, on the next one, but here we go. So the next one, uh, this is number 10 um, on... Um, some papers or 11 on some papers. Um, I forget which one I gave your class, sorry, but 10 or 11, find this one. Requ a reaction requires 3.7 moles of sodium chloride. How many grams do you need? So my question to myself is what am I looking for? Right? What am I looking for? How many grams of NaCl are in 3.7 moles of NaCl, All right? So here's what I'm starting with, right? Number, so that's what I'm starting with. So uh, 3.7 moles of NaCl. Okay, so if I come over here to my mole map, I am starting in moles, and I want to get to how many grams, right? So mass. So I am going this direction. So I'm going to use my molar mass, right? So for sodium chloride, I do my calculations, right? One uh, Na, one Cl. So I know that one mole of NaCl has a molar mass, once I get it off the periodic table, of 58.44 grams of NaCl, right? All right, so... Moles are on top, so I'm going to put the side with moles on the bottom. And then 58.44 grams of NaCl. I'm going to cross these off. Hey, look, I'm in grams of NaCl. That's exactly what I want. So um, this one then, after I do my math on here, um, I'm going to get 216.23 uh, grams of NaCl. Uh, now, I can't remember if this one was on the... Yes, this one is on the final uh, answer key. And some of you are going to be asking, how did you get 220? Um we haven't talked about something called significant figures, and I don't really know if we're going to this year because of all of the craziness timelines in that. That would be how I got 220. Um, and for any of you that are really, really interested in, in that, I'd be more than happy to talk to you, but not right now. Um, all right, let's do one more. All right, the last one here, all right? 380 grams of sucrose are required to make two quarts of Kool-Aid. How many molecules of sucrose are used in this recipe? So once again, what am I looking for? Okay, now when I read through this problem, this, this is where some just word problem skills come into play, right? You've been doing word problems for years. So we know that some of the information in here may be superfluous, right? That we don't really need. So look at this. 380 grams of sucrose are required to make two quarts of Kool-Aid. How many molecules of sucrose are in the recipe? Well, the part that has really nothing to do with what we're looking for here is that it makes two quarts of Kool-Aid, right? That, that 
That's a number that's not really important, but the others are. So really how I would reword this question, right, is how many sucrose molecules are in 380 grams of sucrose. By the way, this is a question that is really kind of irrelevant because why would we need to ever calculate this? Why? Because we're doing a practice problem. That's why. Woo! All right. So here's where I'm going to start, right? And if we look here, I'm going from grams of sucrose and I'm trying to get to molecules of sucrose. So if we look at our mole map over here, I am starting here and I want to get to here. So the mole is our universal uh, unit here, right? So we've got to go to mole and then to representative particle, right? This is a two-step equation here. So let's do that. All right. So 380 grams of sucrose, C12H22O11, right? I'm going to put it over one. Okay. So our first one is going from mass to moles, right? Okay. So One mole of sucrose equals, well, you'll have to go to the periodic table, 20 or 12 C's, 22 H's, uh, 11 oxygens. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, uh, this is um, this is number 19 or 21 on here. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, I go to my periodic table and I see that I have 342 point three zero grams of sucrose. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this side on, since grams are on top, I'm going to put grams on the bottom, 342.30 grams. Sucrose is one mole of sucrose. All right, if I were to stop there, I'd be here in mole, right? But I want to go to um, molecules, right? So I need to take one more step. I know that one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or units, in this case, molecules, right? So moles are on top here. I'm going to put for one mole. Sucrose is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose. All right. There we go. I'm done. So remember, multiplication sign before a top number, division sign before a bottom number. So when I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to put 380 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and divided by 342.30. Uh, and that ends up giving me a number of 6.68 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose. Now, I really highly suggest on all of these, you also do a mental check at the end, right? Really, really helpful for yourself. So think about this. If you have 380 grams of sucrose, and a mole of it has a mass of 342, you have a little over a mole of sucrose, right? Well, we know that a mole of sucrose would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 
So it would make sense that we have slightly over that. And we have 6.68 times 10 to the 23rd. So everything checks out on there, right? It's always important to do a mental check to make sure your number makes sense at the end. All right. Uh, let me know what questions that you have. And don't worry, we'll continue to do uh, practice on this.